giblets, the liver, heart and gizzard and neck of a chicken or other fowl, usually removed before the bird is cooked and often used to make gravy, stuffing or soup. One of the reasons I can't really get into video games is because uh, in 2015 I bought Counter-Strike Global Offensive for £7 on sale. And I have proceeded to play that game for 2,100 hours. No other possible game could have that le And I'm still playing it. I played all... I played CS all day today. With, like, just a couple breaks to eat. I pretty much just played all day. And it's still fun. There is no possible way that I'm going to buy a game for £60, a new game or whatever, and get that much cost benefit out of it, you know? I'm not going to get 2,000 hours out of your game that I'm spending 100 times as much on. So that's, you know, and I love CSGO for so many different reasons, but one of them is just the Source Engine. The Source Engine just hasn't really changed since Gold Source, since Half-Life 1, and Half-Life 1 is one of my favourite games, especially because of the movement. I just love the movement in Source. Source has the best movement of any engine. And, you know, one of the things I love about it is... So, for a very brief period, I tried to speed run Half-Life 1. And one of the tricks you use in the speed run, one of the glitches you use is something called an edge bug. If you land uh, with, like, the 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 one unit, uh, the Source engine uses some, like something called units to measure distance. Um, I don't remember exactly how much it is, but it's very, very short. Um... Uh, if if the, if the back unit of your model, if if you jump down somewhere and land on an edge where the back unit of your model hits the you the one unit of the edge that you're landing on, the game sort of treats the edge like a slope, and in Source, landing on slopes, so a slope is a surface more than forty five degrees. In Source, when you land on a slope, it cancels fall damage, right? Um, which kind of makes sense. It's like sliding down a slope. But if you hit this edge bug, very precise trick, it cancels all the fall damage from landing on the edge, right? And it was very precise in Half-Life 1. And it just still works in Counter-Strike in 2021. The same bug, it's still there, and I do it in games. Like, I, was, I just pulled it off, and it's very difficult to pull off. It's basically luck. I found a semi-consistent strat for doing it on nuke from the silo, um, where I maybe hit it 20% of the time. Uh, if you ever wondered, why have you played this game for 2,000 hours and you're still such a low rank? Uh, the reason is because I do shit like this. I just jump off of silo every single fucking round until I hit the edge bug. And, you know, if you miss it, you lose most of your health and then die whenever you get shot. Uh, and all my teammates hate me. I don't care, because uh, I'm having fun. Yeah, if you're wondering how do you keep a game interesting for 2,000 hours, I don't. That's why, because it has the same fucking movement as Half-Life 1. You can just B-hop everywhere. I mean, it's different. You could B-hopping is nowhere near as OP as it was back in Half-Life or the older versions of Counter-Strike or stuff like that. You know, there's a, there's a speed cap of 300 units per second. If you go over 300 units per second, then when you land, your speed gets reset down to like 150 or something. Um, so you, so B-hopping is actually even more skillful in CS than in any other Valve game, maybe, depending on how you measure it. Because you have to, if you want to, so you, your standard, basically B-hopping is like kind of useless in CSGO because your your movement speed is 250 units per second, and the maximum you can go before you get reset when you touch the ground is 300. So in order to B-hop effectively, you have to be B-hopping like at... If you were to do optimal hops, you'd be going at like 299 units per second. Um, I mean, you can act, because you can change your speed in the air, you could technically be going faster than that on average. I don't know. It's complicated math stuff. But... um. Uh, so really, B-hopping only gets you like an extra 50 units per second, max, and normally you're not hitting that. Um, so it's, you know, it, it there, there is very little reason to actually do it. The, the, the tactical advantage it gives you is minimal, 
uh, but it's just so fun. It feels so good to hear B-hops. It's so intuitive the way air strafing works in Source, and no other engine can piece. This is why I'll never play Valorant, because people say the movement in Valorant feels like 1.6. There's no fucking way the movement feels like 1.6, because it's not made in Source. It's made in some other engine. Like, it's just not possible. I think it's... I don't remember what engine it's made in. But, like, it's it's just not possible that the movement feels the same. And B-hopping in Valorant is just fucking... It doesn't work. You don't gain momentum. Um, like, you can you can B-hop, but it doesn't do anything. Um, and, like, that's just... There's no way I'm ever fucking playing that game because you can't B-hop. And there's, like, you don't have stuff like an, the edge bug you know, a stupid trick that is never useful and probably shouldn't be in the game, uh, but it's so, like, hard to pull off and basically useless that they, they've never really cared to fix it or it's or it's just so built into decades and decades old code that no one wants to touch any of it in case they break everything and so it stays in there. That That is why I love Counter-Strike. I don't give a fuck about toxic Russians or winning games or competitive integrity or the esports scene. I don't fucking care. I like jumping off a big building, landing on a tiny curb and miraculously cancelling all my fall damage and then be hopping out of it around a corner so I can see the guy and then die because I'm fucking trash at the game and I'll miss him and then he'll just kill me. And, and I'll be like, haha, through that one. And then I'll do it again a hundred fucking million times for 2,000 hours. No other game will ever offer me that experience and they all cost five times as much. It's never happening. There are some things I like about visual novels that I just like way more than anime. Like, I think the key point about visual novels is that they take the otaku-oriented thing just way further like it feels like maybe I'm wrong but it feels like more and more anime these days are sort of going for a, a more of a mass appeal you know anime historically has been a very niche thing uh, and it's made its money by honing in and targeting those niches but it feels like now that anime is actually a bigger market than it's ever been uh, as far as I know um, that more and more anime are going for a wider and wider appeal and losing the sort of niche otaku stuff that, that made it special to me in the first place um, but visual novels on the other hand no one who isn't an otaku is going to buy a, a fucking visual novel to play for 50 hours like there is, they're, they're just not going to happen so you get the the no holds barred otaku shit, which is, you know, that's what I'm all all about. Like it, like in Super Heavy, there's a bunch of references to like, I mean, they're not particularly obscure anime, uh, but like there's fully coolie references, there's Lucky Star references and stuff. But like, and I mean that's not too uncommon in anime to reference other stuff. But if you were just a normie and you just have someone recommended you, um, Super Heavy, and then right at the beginning. One of the characters says, do you smoke never knows best? You're just going to be like, what the fuck is she talking about? Um, anyway, that aside, another thing I like about visual novels is that they solve a big problem that anime has, which is, you ever watch a harem show and or, or just any romance-based anime and the guy is just like allergic to sex? Like, he'll to be, on one hand, like, you know, he'll make etchy jokes or whatever, but then as soon as a girl actually comes on to him, he just starts freaking out. Ah, no! And then the camera pans away to the building or whatever. And the guy just gets flustered as soon as anything like that happens. That's the most annoying shit possible. Or in a fucking romance anime, where it's like they drag it out for so long. and Or, like, they have to have some excuse, like the guy or the girl is too nervous to, like, hold hands or whatever, and so it's just, like, it's so fucking annoying, like, because they can't actually progress the romance, um, and that isn't the case in Eroge, because it's Eroge, you know, they, they fuck at some point, so you don't have to worry about that happening, you know when you're reading a romance story that's gonna have a good conclusion. That's good. That's a great thing. Um, and sort of related to that is 
they can do that because visual novels can show stuff that anime can't. Like, the obvious ones being sex and drugs and rock and roll. You know, you might think like, oh, why do you need sex and drugs in your stories? Well, sex and drugs are like very basic human activities, you know? And m more importantly, they're activities which often generate or surround conflict, which is the backbone of storytelling. Uh, and so if you're not allowed to show these two things, that's like a, a whole host of stories that you're just not allowed to tell in anime. Uh, whereas you can tell that, and you know, I was reading, uh, I'm reading another visual novel called uh, Sharin no Kuni Himawari Shoujo, uh, and the main character in that visual novel is a stoner. You would n never get that in anime. Like that, that it might even sound ridiculous. Like an anime where the main character is just a, a smokes weed all the time. I'd like I personally find that really interesting even though stoner characters are kind of annoying that's kind of the cool thing about visual novels is oftentimes the character you're playing as doesn't have to be a nice or good person that's sometimes what's fascinating is getting inside the head of a person who has like who's annoying or a dickhead because then you get to watch you get to see their thought processes and you get to watch them grow um just not something that happens in anime. So here's my little setup. Um, I'm filming in vertical for a reason. This is my new setup. When I'm playing CS, I can be reading a VN at the same time when I die, uh, or when I'm not, you know, actively playing. Uh, but you might think, but no, thank you. Isn't this a little annoying to have to press things up here? And you'd be right, which is why I use KDE Connect on my phone. Uh, in order to control my ThinkPad. So I have my phone over here somewhere uh, and I just tap it and it clicks and bam, there's my setup. Here's something I believe. When I get these aches and pains in my back and my, my shoulders and whatever, my neck, from uh, being hunched over the computer for too long, most people would say that's a sign of an unhealthy lifestyle, you know. That of course you're going to get back pains and neck pains. And eye strain if you're in a dark room hunched over a laptop 24-7. Right? And just because it's unhealthy doesn't mean it's not good for you. Like, yeah, it's true. And I take it as a point of pride. My... Goodbye. Um, my, uh, you saw that stutter, right? You saw my game stuttered? That's the shit I'm dealing with 24 fucking 7. Anyway, uh, you know, the, my, my, I, my lifestyle, the stuff I enjoy doing, the, the stuff my brain likes is so far advanced beyond what the human body was ever designed to handle that I'm breaking it down. I'm breaking the boundaries. I, it, it's the accelerationist ideal, you know, like, I don't know if that makes any fucking sense, but uh, I, I, I don't I don't find it it's not enjoyable necessarily. You know, it's not even good. It's just kind of interesting. It's kind of kind of funny, kind of cool, kind of epic. Bit of a gamer moment. We're gonna. You saw the fucking stutter again, right? I'm not tripping. Do you see? You see what this is? You see what I live with? I'm getting a hundred fucking thirty FPS or whatever, right? Hundred forty FPS something. And my game stutters, just big stutters. This is this is why you don't play on a fucking Mac. This is why you never buy a Mac. This is why you don't learn logic. It's a scam. I don't know if I actually believe anything I'm saying in this video. <laughs> Thank you.
This VN for that other friend to love her. It's not very good. Well, it actually was good. It's too visual novel. So, the common route, I want to say the common route. It's not even all of the, even the beginning of the first route I'm playing, Himari's route. Basically, the VN can be split into two completely separate media. Pre dating, post dating. It's a dating game, you know, it's an arrow game, right? Section one was surprisingly great, right? Like, there were moments where it was genuinely hilarious, like jokes that made me laugh out loud. The characters were all endearing, even the side characters, the teacher, side, like, kids in the class, whatever, and all the girls but endearing, the main character was endearing, um, the art style was passable, um, and there were plenty of cute moments, right, generally maybe a 7 out of 10, maybe even an 8 on a good day, 7.5 we'll say, right, and it was like, you know, there was the tension as it goes up, like, when you're going down a certain girl's route, it's like you're slowly progressing your relationship with this girl, it's called f friend to lover, that's literally what it's about like connecting with someone and progressing your relationship genuinely interesting character arcs, stuff like that and then your confession happens and you're dating and then the main character goes from guy who wants a girlfriend to so go, the his, the main character goes from guy guy who really finally wants a girlfriend like 
it's been too it's it's like come on you know like i'm in i'm in high school now for last year of high school whatever like come on bro this year i'm gonna get a girlfriend and it's like yeah i appreciate the determination you know he goes from that to guy who's had his first girl who's got his first girlfriend right and the problem with that is it's done well from a perspective of like writing a character who is like that because he does behave exactly like a teenager who just got their first girlfriend but the problem is that shit fucking annoying as fuck no one wants to be around someone who is like that no one wants to be around teenagers in their first relationship it's 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 not interesting it's it's not funny it's it's not even relatable because I'm not a normie who behaves like that and I don't know anyone that behaves like that it's just annoying and so just it just goes from this like you know kind of charismatic funny uh, and uh, now a, a bit with narrative progress story to just like dumb relationship bullshit just like here we are hanging out here oh she's jealous of this thing that happened oh i'm jealous of this thing that happened oh don't i just love her so much oh we're, oh when are we gonna tell our parents oh um blah 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 oh she's insecure about that i don't fucking care bo and he's so obnoxious like He's, you become one of those couples that's just constantly flaunting your shit everywhere like anyone else gives a shit. The, okay, this is the key point. Is that at first, it was almost like, you know, you're reading a VN from the main character's perspective. It was like being in class and hanging out with a bunch of cool people. And then after you, the, the confession, it turns into just watching two teenagers be in a relationship. It's just boring. Like, just watching them, some other people that you don't really, you know, the progression is over. And I kind of wish it was, like, I, I'm worried that it's going to be really long, this segment, right? I don't know how it's going to end. I, I haven't even finished the first route yet. It's a long as fuck visual novel. So it's like, I don't know, is this going to go forever? Just how much do I have to sit through before I can play another route and it's not like it's even awful like it's the translation was never that great there's spelling mistakes and stuff but it's, it's fine like it's a fan translation I'm, I'm used to it but the the writing you know it, there's 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 very little nothing happened they, it, it, it's not varied anymore there's no like moments anymore of things happening the only thing that happens is the main character shouting at you, I have a girlfriend now. Uh, you know, it's it's very dis sad, disheartening. It's very disheartening. We're installing Windows, baby. Don't worry, it's not on my ThinkPad. I would never, I would never perform such horrible acts as to install Windows on my ThinkPad. This is a shitty old other laptop to install Windows on. I sound like corpse. You ever wonder how corpse husband has such a cool voice? I'll give you a tutorial. You get a good microphone. You get a good microphone, you get really close to it, so you get the proximity effect, and you talk really quietly like this, and then it's called vocal fry, and you just talk like this, and then you're corpse. Yeah, that's me, I'm corpse husband. I like to play among us. So here are some of the fun bugs. Um, let's just load into a game. Let's just go into recoil. Why not? Right? Let's just load into recoil. Ah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I seem to be spinning around. Good morning. What do I want to eat? This is the question I'm always asking. I woke up. Just woke up. 3 p.m. Just woke up. Right? Took my caffeine. Now, I'm like, I need to eat something. Loads of shit that I could eat. But it's too much choice. Sometimes, 
I wish that all I had op options was rice and beans. Maybe some canned tuna. That's all you need in life. That's enough to survive, right? Maybe some... Uh, I don't know. What I'm saying is I don't like too much choice. This is me uh, arguing in favour of America's two-party democracy. Right? <laughs> it just gets confusing when there's more than two options, you know? It's just it's like, oh, there's too much choice. I don't. Maybe I don't want anything. Maybe I don't want anything, you know? Uh, so I guess I'll go eat. But I just can't decide. Like, maybe I'll have just eggs. I guess... I'm I've actually I used to be the egg man, right? It, it was always like, well, if I'm gonna eat, I'm gonna eat eggs, right? But now it's like kinda getting I kinda feel like I've had enough eggs <laughs> it last me a lifetime. It lasts me twelve of them. Sixteen of them. However many you need. However many lifetimes you need, I've I've eaten enough eggs for them. Oh there's bacon with no tails. Yeah, I might have bacon with no tails. But then what do I have with my bacon? In a sandwich, bacon and eggs, bacon and bacon, waking and shaken, waking and bacon. I don't know, let's find out. Decided to have pasta, and now's as good as time as any to show you my, uh, how to make my tuna pasta recipe. So, salt, the pasta water, get some olive oil. Now, the key to olive oil is you want to use a fuck ton. Uh, you always want to use a fuck ton of olive oil <laughs> because who cares about health? I just don't care about my health. I just want to eat nice food while I'm still alive. Is that enough? See, that's not even that much. Because it's like dripping out. This shit's just fucked. Shit's just fucked. Look, it's barely dripping out. Okay, that's that's enough. That's plenty. Alright. We gotta put some shallot. Okay, the, it's browned a little too much. The next is two cloves of garlic. Chopped up finely. All right, it's definitely browned a little too much, but that's fine, you want, it doesn't matter. It, it, like, it, it barely makes a difference in the flavor at the end of the day once it's covered in sauce. And we'll also put, actually, let's wait a little bit. <laughs> This is my uh, thingy, tuna. Now we'll put the tuna in. Now this is mostly useless. There's not really any point in doing this. But I just do it for no reason. That's not even a joke. I just do this for no reason. You could just as easily not do this. Okay, vermouth. And in. Oh, a little bit of tuna fell off, but I'll have to clean it up later. A little more vermouth. There we go. Vermouth is that good oh. shit.
passata in Star, 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 star. Okay, now you might be thinking, why aren't you seasoning it yet? No, thank you. Oh, yeah, time to turn the water on as well. But no, thank you. Why aren't you seasoning it yet? Well, because it's still going to taste like alcohol. I'm going to wait until the alcohol cooks off, then I'll season it, because that way I can taste it for seasoning accurately. Okay, now we're going to add the olives. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven, twelve. Thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen is a bad number. Fifteen, sixteen. That's enough of olives. And I'm now going to get myself an anchovy. Oh, this is too long. Let's stop. One chopped anchovy. And that's basically everything except for seasoning. It's all the ingredients. A little bit of oregano. This is a weird little oregano dispenser. Alright, let's give it a taste, see if it needs anything. Needs everything. Salt. A bit more. Pepper. Loads of pepper. I am a fucking pepper fiend. I love black pepper so much. So I put a shit ton in everything. Yes, this is literally how much pepper I put in stuff. I love pepper. It also, the pepper mill doesn't work that well. We've turned it down. We're waiting for the water to come to a boil so I can cook the fucking pasta. So the sauce is basically done. Alright, let's see how this tastes now. You're not going to believe it. Needs more pepper.
事。Perfect. Passed it in. So I've made an interesting decision. I decided to split the pasta sauce into two because it was like it was too much for one portion. So I saved that for another day. Uh, but then it was too small, so I've added more vermouth, uh, and I'm now cooking it down. Oops! Why is this not off? What the fuck? Okay, that was weird. Um. Yeah, I'm hoping this works. But I'm just hoping it cooks down fast enough so it doesn't taste like alcohol. Let's see. It doesn't really taste like alcohol yet that much anymore, so it should be fine. Once we add pasta water to it, it should be fine. Let's see. Hello? Pasta. Almost done. It probably doesn't look that good on camera. Kind of looks sludgy in real life as well. But uh, tastes good. Let's give it a shot. Mm. Oh, tastes good. Let's give it a try. Easy to make and cheap and delicious. I think this is a good thing to bury in the middle of this video since no one cares. Here's my opinions on the currently airing anime season. Attack on Titan, don't care. Netherland, don't care. Stone Wars, I'll watch when it's finished, I'll marathon it because I did that with the first season. It was really good for marathoning. Reincarnated as a slime, I'll do the same thing. Again, the first season was really good for marathoning don't really want to watch it while it's airing because they're the sort of shows, both of them are the sort of shows where every episode ends on a cliffhanger and I fucking hate having to wait a week just to find out what happens next. Uh, yeah. ReZero, don't give a shit. Uh, don't give a shit about this. Gotobun no Hanayomi, uh, I dropped the first season so I won't be watching that. Uh, this very generic sounding isekai. I might check out if I can, if I hate myself enough. Beastars I don't care about. This one is the fucking retard bait. This is the Reddit bait. Um, redo of a healer, it's the Reddit bait of the season. Um, Cells of Work I don't care about. Log Horizon Season 3, I didn't even know they were making a third season of Log Horizon. I'll watch it when it's finished airing. Maybe... Seven Deadly Sins don't care. Two different cells at works are coming out. Don't care about either of them. What is this? Oh, this is the spider one, right? I don't fucking care. <laughs> um, this one looks like another light novel, edgy fantasy. I will may you know. If I if if one day comes around when I just hate myself and I just want to fucking die, then I'll watch this. One direct priority, this seems like some artsy type shit, you know? But uh, it also seems very teen drama y, so I don't know if I'll end up watching that. Kodomo Jihen looks like edgy urban fantasy shit, probably not. Skate Infinity, no way am I watching that shit. Eurocamp Season 2, I'm 100% gonna be watching. I love Eurocamp. I'll watch that as it's airing. This is probably the only thing I'll be watching as it's airing. You know what? I might check out this because I think I might be able to deal with like one episode at a time of Awful Isekai. This is the bottom tier character, Jack Kada, Tomazaki kun. Um, I've seen some clips from this show that made me slightly interested, but not interested enough to actually care and watch it. Um, uh, this is a really long title for a show that looks like another isekai, so I'm not gonna watch it. Who the fuck is Leiden Films? They've made like 20 shows this season. What have they ever done? What the fuck is this shit? They made Berserk 2016? What the fuck is all this? Koito Uso? I know about that. I haven't seen it. 
Akasic Records. Oh yeah, with the best school uniforms in any anime. Tejina Senpai, that was shit. Okay, well, this is not giving me hope, but you never know. Oh, Ayua was pretty good. I don't even remember watching this. Miss Monochrome? Oh, I, I, I think I like... No, I don't know if I actually did watch that. I thought maybe I'd... I think I just thought about watching it, but I never actually watched it. Yeah, okay, well, I don't give a fuck about them. They've only... The best thing I've done is Ayo, which is only, like, mediocre. Oh, wait, I'm supposed to be reading this. What the fuck is this? Uraseki Panic. Urasekai Panic. <laughs> Oversight after seeing that thing and nearly dying. Ever since... Oh, my God, this is disgusting. Yeah, I'm not watching that. What is this? Volleyball, don't care. World Trigger, non on Biori, don't care. X arm. Phobia of electrical devices will also be very good. Uh, it has a two? Is that seriously a two stars? I don't know if I've ever seen a two star rating before. That's incredible. What have we got? Just don't watch it. It's a pain to look. Okay, well, you know what? <laughs> Interesting. Don't go straight dogs. Don't care. This looks terrible. This looks even worse. That looks slightly better, but still bad. Not gonna watch it. Who the fuck is Platinum Vision? Your production IG? What is this? Who's working on it? Mamu Oshii? Why have I not heard about this? Why have I not heard about this? We're putting this in my plan to watch. No one's even mentioned this, that Mamu Oshii is making an anime this season. Everyone's talking about the fucking Reddit bait. Okay, well, I'll check that out. Um, ring... <laughs> Ringando. That's so stupid. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think I'm watching that. Azure Lane. I kind of want to watch some of the Azure Lane anime. The character designs are good. Ice skating. Don't care. This looks bad as well. This is just hentai. Uh, more Uma Musume. That was bad. I don't know why anyone liked that show. Idol shit. Surfing show. What the fuck is this? Bruh, the Geki Doll, no idol shit. Show by Rock it was mediocre at best. I don't know what any of this shit is. Kid shows, Precure. Well, uh, I think I will be watching one show this season. I will be watching Eurocamp season two. Um, and I will watch Dr. Stone and Slimy Sakai. Uh, once they're finished. But Eurocamp is top tier. Top tier comfy shit. If you haven't seen season one, go watch it. It's an... Sometimes you may doubt that I'm British, but I truly believe that a nice cup of tea... Uh, this My mum put a little too much milk in this for my taste, but it's still good. It's not overly milky. It's just slightly more milky than I would milk it. But I truly believe that a nice cup of tea is one of the greatest pleasures in life. Just a solid, nothing fancy. It's just Earl Grey. Actually, it is quite nice Earl Grey, but it's not like loose leaf. You know, it's in a tea bag. Normal London water. Ah, <sighs> oh, it's just such a, it's, it's like heaven. <laughs> It's very close to what I imagine heaven is like. A nice cuppa. You know, I feel bad for Americans. Americans, they never drink tea. What are they up to? No wonder their country's so fucked. No wonder they're always so fucked. They never get to sit down and enjoy a nice cuppa. These kids ain't just bitty enough. I really think hypnagogia is a really important state interesting and that's where all the best stuff happens you know the, the gap between wakefulness and sleep uh transition the other day for example i woke up and went to go piss right uh went back to my bed i'm going back to my bed falling asleep i don't remember what's happening because it's like a dream you don't remember it 
but all I remember is the words I had to write down. I was like, oh, that's a really cool sentence, I gotta write it down, or something like that. Oh, that's important for some reason. I remember thinking that something was important for some reason. So I got my phone and typed it out, fuck it, threw it away, went back to sleep. Woke up next day, checked my notes, I wrote down th these three words. Life looms and health angels. Life looms and health angels. What does that mean? Ain't nobody know, but it's important. I know that. I know it's important. Life looms and health angels. Life looms? I, I seem to remember some negative thing, like like I was laughing to myself. Like, maybe this is wrong. Maybe I'm imagining this after the fact. Maybe I'm imagining this after the fact. But I feel like I was thinking, like, I don't need none of those life looms and health angels. I feel like that was the context, but I might be wrong. I might be wrong. I might be wrong. I don't know. I might be lying to myself. All I can say for sure, all the only, only thing I know is true in the universe is the three words, life looms and health angels. Let me tell you a story. So... This is my ThinkPad X200, uh, right? It's the X200, not the X220, yeah. Um, my Probably my most prized possession, probably my favourite single thing I own, I would assume. Um, so yesterday, I'm like, I'm going to go make some pizza. So I went in to the front room, made some pizza. Pizza in the oven, frozen pizza, because I'm... A boss. Like Rick Ross. This is terrible. We're we recording this. Let me tell you a story. So, this is my ThinkPad. It's probably my most prized possession. Uh, yesterday, last night, I uh, went to go make some pizza in the, at like 5 a.m. or whatever, as I tend to do, 4 a.m. ish. And I uh, brought my ThinkPad in so I could listen to a podcast while I was making pizza. Put the pizza in the oven, and then I think to myself, well, I ate a big meal today, so I might not finish the whole pizza. So let me get down a little container from the top shelf so that I can uh, put the uh, pizza in that I don't eat, so I can put it in the fridge and have it for breakfast tomorrow. So then I think, okay, you know what? There is a very slim chance that this container falls down and lands on my laptop. So let me move the laptop out the way first. Let me just put it to the side so it's a bit further away from the the cupboard in case it falls down, right? So I go, I try and grab the container and uh, of course it slips out of my hands because it's right at the top. It's You can't really get a good grip on it. Um, so it slips out of my hands and falls and I'm like, I don't really make any attempt to catch it because I think, well, my laptop's over there. Worst thing that happens, it falls on the floor and makes a noise. So I don't really care. That was my, like, split-second decision-making. Of course, somehow, it lands on my laptop. Podcast switches off. I look over, the laptop's turned off. I'm like, did it land on the power button? Wow, that's crazy. That's a crazy coincidence. It landed on the power button. So I press the power on. It boots up and then gives me an error message. Some device not found. Fuck. Turn it off, turn it on again. Fuck. It must have landed in a bad place on my laptop. Shit. So my laptop fucking broke. I was like, fuck this. I'm not dealing with this tonight. I'm too tired. I had a headache at the time. It wasn't good. I was like, fuck this. I'm going to deal with this tomorrow. So I just left, used my other computer for the night. Next day is today. I'm uh, looking, I'm booing it up. <coughs> and I'm searching for the error message online. I'm getting multiple different people telling multiple different things. Some people are saying... But, I don't know, they're saying you need to point your computer in the right place. But as I'm, as I'm doing this, on my, like researching on my other computer, my, comp my ThinkPad is on, and I'm hearing noises. I'm hearing little scratchy noises. I'm like, scratchy noises? Those weren't there before. And this can't be a software thing. Some of the things were telling me it's a software thing. I'm like, if something landed on the computer, that wouldn't point the computer to the wrong address. Like, I don't know much about computers, but I don't think that can happen. Like, this must be a hardware thing. So, uh, 
I, I'm thinking maybe I can just search it and open the computer up and jiggle some wires around and maybe it something just came loose. But uh, I hear this scratching noise. I pick up my computer, I pick up my laptop and I put my ear to it. I'm like, where's that noise coming from? Well, of course, the only really moving part is the, the hard drive. So I think, I guess it must have somehow landed on the hard drive. How is that possible? Like the hard drive is... If you don't know what I'm thinking about, it's the hard drive is like buried right down here. It's very hard to damage by design. Um, yeah, I'm like, that's unlikely, but you know what? There's no harm will come from trying out switching the hard drive. So uh, thankfully, I have my old ThinkPad. Uh, um, and that has an SSD in it, one terabyte SSD. So I switch them out. Lo and behold... Turns on, boots perfectly fine, back, and I feel like I'm back in 2016 or whatever, because my old laptop is still there, perfectly functional. My All my old settings, my old wallpapers, my old i3 rice, um, you know, everything. I'm like, wow. So it just boot, I guess it just damaged the hard drive. Um, so then I just had to spend all day fucking... I reinstalled Manjaro, because I used to be running Triscoll on that old one, so I installed Manjaro on this one. Uh, you know, set up everything like I like it. I this wallpaper is much better than my old wallpaper, so that was a that was a good thing. But uh, stupidly, I don't have backups of that computer. I only have backups of my Mac, because that's where all my music is. And I think my I was I only have one external hard drive. So I thought um, it's probably should prioritize my career over my anime images. So I chose to use it to back up my Mac instead of my ThinkPad. But yeah, I don't have backups of my ThinkPad. I'm probably going to order a SSD, I mean, order an external hard drive. But I've actually upgraded the computer, because now it has an SSD instead of a disk drive. Or hard disk, whatever the fuck it's called. Um, so yeah, it's just been a bit of a pain, but we got it back up. We got it back up and riced. And uh, turns out I ate the whole pizza. I didn't even need the fucking container. Didn't even need it. <laughs> Could have just not had it. Delicious pizza though. I was, you know what? I'd say it was. I was almost worth it. But I'm I'm in pain because my fucking visual novel saves are all on that computer. And I'm thinking, you now I was just complaining about Furedaba, right? I don't know if I was complaining about that in this video or what, but I was complaining about it. And now Allah has come down and smited my save files. Is this Allah telling me to stop playing this shitty fucking visual novel and play something better with my time? Maybe. So I might just drop it. I still haven't decided yet. I, do I care enough to fucking skip through all the dialogue back to where I was? I think I don't. I think I actually don't care enough to do that. Yeah, I think I might drop it, actually, now that I'm really thinking about it. Like, it's not really worth it. But the problem is I had other save data. Like, I had my save data for, um, K uh, Karen no... Sing the other one that I'm playing. And Sharon no Kuni, Himawari no Shoujo. That was... And that's good. Like, I I definitely want to continue playing that one. Um, but I guess I'm dropping Furedaba. I'll play a different vision. I, will, I, I don't want to drop it, because it was actually good before the fucking character route started. Oh well, well that's the story of how I broke and fixed my laptop. Thank God it was the one part I have a perfectly working replacement for. How lucky is that? Furedaba feels like two completely different VNs hastily sewed together. One is a genuinely funny, charming and engaging slice of life about doing as the title suggests, going from friend to lover. The other is a corny, boring and bloated series of vignettes where you watch a young couple do young couple things for a billion hours. Once you confess to a girl and start actually dating, all humour and charm goes out the window as the game deteriorates into an endless barrage of the most overplayed romantic beats, hackney jealousy plot points that go nowhere, unimaginative, unimaginative H scenes and a whole load of nothing. I love Slice of Life. When I say nothing, I mean nothing. Not comedy, drama, romance, anything. The MC throws his friend away like nothing as soon as he gets in a relationship. But I do think this makes sense for what his character might do, being so obsessed with getting a GF that once he does, his entire life revolves around her. It's completely uninteresting to actually play through. We don't 
do any more character building, no narrative arcs, literally nothing but the most stereotypical romance scenes you could think of. A relationship so perfect that it gives you absolutely nothing to latch onto. Clearly the writers realised this at some point, so they decided to force narrative tension in the most unimaginative ways possible. None of these moments have weight because they are instantly solved. In wanting the relationship to be... <clears throat> In wanting the relationship to be perfect escapism, they cut out all of the actual storytelling. When the characters stay outright that they would never break up, there are no stakes at all, and therefore nothing to keep you interested in what's going on, what's going to happen next. I know what's going to happen next. They're going to feed food to each other while saying, ah, and all right, for, rant for ten minutes about how much they love each other. Maybe I'm just too cynical for this kind of game. If you just want pure candy-flavoured escapism, then maybe this is for you. For me, it's a nothing burger. Uh, which is a shame because the common route and seduction period are so well written and entertaining. You see, during that period, there is an actual narrative arc. The characters have goals and challenges to overcome. The plot actually progresses. Even if you just want a girlfriend simulator, there are better options. Some of you may never reach this level of comfy. I've got my Euro Camp up, season two. I'm blanky mode. I got, can't really see it, but I got a glass of good whiskey. Um, shall I say, you know? I kind of thought I had enough giblets, but after putting the editing together, it seems like the video just doesn't, it's not. So, um, after I reinstalled, you heard the story about my ThinkPad, after I reinstalled Manjaro and everything, I thought, well, that's as good excuse as any to, um, uh, finally fucking install a tiling window manager. So I've been meaning to do, because I used to, a long time ago, on my old ThinkPad, use i3, right? And i3 was great. Tiling window managers are objectively more comfy on a laptop, uh, right? And so I thought, okay, fuck it, Fine, finally time to install a tiling window manager. But I don't want to use i3 because I've already done that, so I'll do DWM. But I couldn't get DWM to work, so I decided to go with BSPWM instead. Um, and that was a fucking mistake. <laughs> <laughs> it took me, like, at least two days to get it fucking working. Um, uh, I mean, it worked at, at the first day, but it looked like shit. Like, it took me, like, two days to rice it to how I like it. But now I'm very happy with how it looks. And I I learned a lot about Linux. Uh, like, I, 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 I feel like I improved my skills um, with Linux while, while ricing it. So I feel like it was worth it. But anyway, so this is my rice. Um... Uh, we got my wallpaper, this is my GTK theme, uh, Discord, nothing special. Um, my, I, I, I switched to uh, URXVT for my, oh shit, what the fuck is this? Oh yeah, I still haven't actually done it yet, so not everything is working. This is me looking on Reddit because I need to add a battery module to my polybar, which I haven't done yet. I have like RAM, memory brightness and volume but I haven't added batteries yet um so I need to add ba a battery module um but I haven't figured out that yet hold on let me let me open the terminal my terminal looks really cool um let me see uh what's it called f e s fet dot s h bam there's my fucking fetch uh, let me make this a it's kind of this this is not built to be done one handed <laughs> This is really not built to be done one-handed. Uh, oh, fuck. Yeah. 
this is this is bad. Let me just move this over to another workspace. Oh no, there's already stuff on this workspace. Let me move it over to another workspace. Um, there we go. Does it look cool yet? Am I cool yet? Uh, come on. Sorry. Sorry for the pain. There you go, now we got it looking cool. There, I can post this on r slash Unix porn and everyone will think I'm cool. I need to rename my GTK theme because it's just called Colors1. But uh, yeah. Uh, what else did I do that looks cool? I have D menu. That's nice. My polybar is nice. It's clickable. So you can click on a workspace. Not that I would ever use that. I would always just use my SX HKD. Um, hotkeys to switch. I have a... This took me a, for fucking... This broke 20 times. So I, I have a... Uh, I had to manually set so the volume works. That was one thing. But I also had to manually set so the brightness works. And I realized I only ever really use two brightness modes. Either normal brightness like now, or um, when I'm... Uh, like... Either normal brightness like now, or before I sleep, I set it to a low brightness and I turn on my, my like... Uh, blue gone, which is a ter like a CLI, um, uh, like red uh, redshift, like flux type program. So I just put a, a shortcut that will set my brightness low, and um, do that. That took fucking forever. I don't know why. I don't know why. I well, I didn't. For some reason, I didn't realize. Like I was doing. I have it so it's a uh, super alt R to refresh BSPWM, but um. Uh, like for some reason that wasn't working and it, it only actually took effect once I restarted the whole computer but it was like half taking effect so I just thought it was broken I thought I was being an idiot um, like I thought like why isn't this really basic script working because I'm using brightness ctl to set the brightness and blue gone so it's just the command is literally like brightness ctl and and blue gone right like it's 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 a very simple command so i don't know why i couldn't figure out why it wasn't working but it turned out i just needed to restart my computer for like to actually take effect um but yeah now that's nice that's like really fucking useful so i just have one keybind that can do that which is really nice um anything else interesting no i think that's it i think that's my rice pretty much um oh i installed a useful network manager plugin um, that where I can access network manager from D menu, like I don't have to exit D menu to like I I can change which network I'm connected to in D menu, which is fucking really sick. Uh, if you use D menu, I recommend it. I think it's literally just called network manager D menu on on Pac Man. Uh, yeah, I'm super cool. I'm super cool. I got rice now. I, I, everything looks neat. I did have a better disc like another Discord theme where it was like transparent, kind of like my terminal. But it, firstly, it didn't look like my terminal. Like, it wasn't black, like, blacked out. It wasn't, like, darker. It was just, like, bl like blurry. And it, it kind of didn't look that good with the rest of my rice. Uh, because I just downloaded it off the internet and I couldn't be bothered. And it was also, like, slow as fuck. So I just stopped doing that. Oh, also, I installed a, uh, I installed ff 2 mpv finally. So if I click on a random video, I can scroll down and press play in MPV. And it will open it up in MPV. Give it a second. So now I can watch all my YouTube videos in MPV, which is way nicer. Um, I think that's it. I think that's everything I need to show you. The VN Machine. So kind of recently I made this song. Uh, it's a cover of a Motown song uh, by the Supremes. Keep me hanging on, right? It's like a hyper-pop cover. And as you can see, I ended up privating it. Um, uh, it's still up on Patreon. If you if you follow me on Patreon, you can you can still get access to it if you're in the music club. Um, I'll never delete it from there. And uh, if you wanna like, if you want it, if you're like, oh man, I really love that song. Why did you private it? Just message me and I'll send you the MP3. Like it's not that much of a big deal. But um, I. I have decided that I just don't want to make anything that sounds like hyperpop anymore. Um, and the reason isn't that I don't like, like I, I was, like I, I kept wondering why I felt guilty when I made it. Cause it was like, I mean, I'm having fun making the music. Like it, it hyperpop is fun to make. It's, 
it's a it's a music genre that was designed by producers like it's one of the first music genres that was sort of uh like it's emblematic of of a, a general increase in skill level among producers uh like like i'm like bedroom producers basically to the point where it's like accessible it's like it's got a really heavy focus on sound design right and it's just it's made by producers to be fun to make like it's invented by sophie and rest in peace by the way that fucking sucks that she died like damn that was out of nowhere uh, it's invented by like you know sophie and like dylan brady and laura les and whatever to be fun to make like they just did what is the most fun stuff you can possibly do as a producer which is like the weird fucking sound design shit and like loud bass don't care about clipping like none of the boring shit right um and so it's fun as fuck to make and it sounds pretty good like when you list like it sounds good like you know we all like a hundred gecks or whatever <laughs> but we all like fucking what's that guy called sebi uh yeah right like all that shit it's faxium you know it sounds fine like it sounds fun it sounds like you can bob your head to it you know um and so it's like very very and it's also very popular right now and very like homogenous around the soundcloud sphere and whatever like you you won't be able to not hear it and so naturally i ended up making stuff that sounded like that because it's easy well it's not easy but it's fun and rewarding to make it sounds good and it's popular so everything was pointing towards me making this kind of stuff. But every time I would make something that sounds like Kyber Pop, I would think, like, I would feel guilty about it. And I was like, why do I feel guilty? At first I thought it was like, well, I feel like I'm just getting swept or swept up in the zeitgeist. Because I, I think Hyper Pop will sound like shit in a couple of years. I think Hyper Pop is this generation's, like, new metal. Like, I, I think it's, it's going to be an embarrassment when we listen back to it. I don't know if it'll be that embarrassing. But, um, like, I do not think it's going to hold up. I think it's going to age poorly. I'll put it that way. Um, and I think it's also leading in a direction I don't necessarily want music to go in terms of, like, pop music. Like, I, f I feel like there's go it's it's going to lead to a really cool thing which is where it's, like, the opposite. Because Hyperpop is all, like, about bombasticness and over-the-top sparkly production and shit. Which is fine, but I feel but every time there's a movement like that, you end up sparking a counter movement, uh, where of the opposite, you know, and I that's my that's really where all the good shit happens. It's the opposite where it's all not that, but it's also kind of a synthesis, but it, that doesn't matter. What's important? Well, I, I'm getting good distracted. I I I wrote a tweet about it. Which is where I'm, st I but I know most of you don't follow me on Twitter probably, so it doesn't matter. That uh, basically I realized hyperpop it's fun to make and it sounds good, but it feels like I'm making someone else's art. Like it doesn't feel like I'm making something that's really artistically true to myself. Like it feels like I'm expressing the emotions that someone else feels, and that's that's fine. Like it's fun to make, and I I, f I'm, I might not stop making it. But I don't think I'm going to keep releasing it publicly, stuff that sounds like that, because it just doesn't reflect. Yeah, the, the inside of my head doesn't sound like this. Like, that's that's not the emotions I feel, you know? The emotions I feel... This is, this is completely someone else's reality. This is someone who grew up listening to pop punk and still likes it, <laughs> you know? This is someone who... This is, this is like... I don't know, American of all things, the most disgusting. That like, <laughs> it's not me. My inside of my brain sounds like the fucking sludge metal, and like anime OPs and Shinsei Kamatachan, and No Trend, and Denpa music, mosaic or wav type shit. Under seventeen, nano 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 hita, uh, and like Tina Weymouth bass lines and like James Jameson bass lines. I but I covered a song with a James Jameson bass line and I removed the bass line. Like that's the problem with this song. 
the original Keep Me Hanging On has one of the best bass lines of all time. Best bass lines of all time. God, that bass line is so fucking good. And I removed it because it doesn't fit in hyperpop, right? You can't have, like, it just doesn't make sense. And that's, that's, the, that's really the key problem here. That's really the key problem here. Um, yeah. So no more, no more music that sounds like this. The problem is, though, that, like, my audio interface, which you can barely see over there, somewhere in the noise, there you go, uh, is broken. It broke a while ago. And I ordered a replacement and it just never arrived and I I got a refund. Like, it was supposed to come, like, a, a week ago or something and it just never arrived, so I ended up getting a refund. Which fucking sucks because I still can't fucking play bass. I still can't plug my bass in. Well, as soon as I can plug my fucking bass into my laptop again, I'm going to be making punk music. I am going to be making punk music. So much punk music. But I fucking can't. I can't do shit right now. I got the battery working in my poly bar. It was actually very simple. I just had to change a uh, zero to a, I mean a one to a zero. Uh, yeah. I, uh, All of my friends represent like the entire spectrum of of video game players, right? Like, like I would I, I maybe I'm interpreting it wrong, but the way I see it, we you got. Plunder, who plays games basically as a stim, just to keep their hands, like, busy, pretty much, and, like, you know, purely on a mechanical level, pretty much. That's my, this is just my understanding. Maybe I'm completely getting my interpretation of these people wrong. That wouldn't be unprecedented. Uh, then you got Lily, who I consider to be, like, a hardcore console gamer, basically. Right, like plays many variety of games, often old games from her childhood, replays uh, or stuff like that, uh, for like long stretches of time. Not like super ridiculous, but you know, like in, invested in them, and not just for the mechanics, but for the story as well, and for the the whole experience. Then you've got Carla, who pretty much just plays RuneScape. And RuneScape is basically like cookie clicker. You just sort of leave it on in the background while you do other stuff. Um, right. And then there's me, who just plays Counter-Strike. Which is like a complete, like, okay, now your mind is... Now you are totally involved and in invested in this game for 40 minute stretches. Where you need to be paying full attention while you're playing, right? And then... It's like it's like sprinting, right? Like you get you get a short sprint where you have to pay full attention, and then I take a break, then I die, and I play foot it up. Oh no, wait, what is this? Drag you out. Um, yeah, this is my setup, by the way. It's pretty. It's pretty. It's pretty based. If I can set it up, hold on a second. So this is my setup. I think I didn't I show this earlier in the video, but I changed it. Yeah, I changed it because I used to this used to be my ThinkPad, but now this is my Windows computer because it's easier to get games to run on this and Dracuite doesn't run in mine. And then instead of having my phone here, I have um, the keyboard here, which just plugs in. And I just but I die. If you're wondering why I'm silver, um, I joined a deranking group and I've been deranking. Uh, but yeah, that's my that's my interpretation of all of us being weird gamers. Interesting part of that, which I completely forgot to mention, is none of us play modern games. None of us are like normal people who just like buy the latest games. <laughs> this is the whole point of what I was trying to say, but I completely forgot to mention it. That none of us like own the most modern consoles and play like newly released games at all, as far as I'm aware. Like, that just doesn't happen. We, we're just completely on another spectrum of gamer. I think people seem to think, I don't know if it's just a meme or what, but people seem to say a lot that, like, slice of life shows have no plot. And this is just objectively incorrect. Every story has a plot. The only anime that don't have any plot are, like, completely abstract tonal pieces, like... Like this one, for example, which you should all go watch because it's on YouTube and it's great. But every story has a 
story, even if the story is something very basic, it's still a story. So when I complain about the plot of a Moe thing, and people say, well, it, you're complaining about the plot, but it's Moe. Yeah, but the Moe comes from what happens in the show, aka the plot. Even in something, even in the most Iyashike of Iyashikes, right? Yeah, you're just gonna watch me get killed over and over again, because uh, I ain't playing. Like, you know, the obvious one, the obvious example is Mushishi. Mushishi is complete Iyashike, but it's still, every episode has a very obvious plot. Or Arya. There are still very obvious plots per episode. Even something like, um, I don't know, uh, uh Wasagi Deska, like the most diabetes of all the Moe shows, right? Even that has, like, beats, you know, it has plot beats, <laughs> like, um, I don't know, I can't remember any off the top of my head, but, you know, there's, like, stuff happens, like, there's one episode where there's a killer rabbit of some kind, or, like, um, oh, we need to go to, uh, we're gonna go visit this person in this restaurant, or, oh, uh, we're gonna go, dude, like, there's always a plot, there's something, like, there is always a plot. I should have probably looked up an example before I started, like, ranting. I shouldn't have just said there is a plot without any evidence. But there is. Like, the, even if it's just a very simple, like, the, the Yon-Comma format, like, the plot is just set up, punchline type of formula, that's still a plot. Like, that's still a narrative arc. Um, so it is very possible to critique a Moe or Slice of Life or Iyashike thing for having a bad plot, like, that is still possible, especially when they go the other direction, and they do, like, uh, for example, like, um, Nanoha, uh, Strikers, is it Strikers? No, Nanoha, the third season of Nanoha, whatever that one is, um, like, where they, they do the opposite, they go, like, like, completely all in on the plot from the very beginning, and with that, then do the Moe later. He wasn't expecting that, was he? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what I mean? Like, this is with the plot. I, I'm not gonna lie. You know the, the YouTube right-wing pipeline thing that everyone's always going on about? I kind of low-key didn't believe it. Like, I thought, like, maybe it was a thing back in 2016, but, like, or, or before that, but, like, it can't be a, th like, it's not really a thing anymore, you know? That's what I thought, right? Now, so... This is my Windows laptop that I used to play visual novels on. You can see I got a visual novel open right now. Oh, wait, I can't show it. There's a reason I'm ex escaped. This is the panic screen of the visual novel. You can press escape and it brings you to a fake Twitter. Um, yeah, the, the, it's a it's an error, okay, you know. It's got error in it. But yeah, I, I, I tabbed out and I went on YouTube to look something up. Oh yeah, I was looking up Doug Stanhope or whatever. And I, I clicked back on the YouTube logo to go back home and I'm not signed in on this computer, right? I've never used signed in on Google on this computer before because it's a new Windows install, right? And I have no reason to give them my identity. And I saw, I saw on the YouTube front page this video, Bully gets shook after being confronted. And I thought, this might be funny, so I'll click on it. I know it's a normie fucking tier video. I know it's a 25 million... I, listen, I'm like, maybe I'll get to see some nice d d justice, you know, whatever. I'll watch this video uh, and then I'll go back to reading my visual novel, right? You know, judge me if you want for clicking on a cringy normie video, but I clicked on it, right? And I, I, I went to go watch it, and I watched it. It was a pretty funny video, right? It's like a little, a little kid. It's just this little kid, right? And he's just like, hey, yo, bro, you want me to fuck him up for you? You want me to fuck him up for you? It's very funny. Um, but look, look at the, look at all the fucking suggested videos. Look at this shit. Antifa versus Marines destroyed alpha male. <laughs> what is that? And then you scroll down. Man, right, what is going on? And, there's a, and then, and then, wait, 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 wait for it. Ben Shapiro, what is going on, bro? Like, why is that getting recommended? It doesn't make any fucking sense. I'm getting Heckler videos, and I'm getting Ben Shapiro videos from watching this. Why? What the fuck, YouTube algorithm? That's just so... I'm getting Antifa versus Marines <laughs> destroyed alpha male. <laughs> I don't really use Twitter anymore the same way I used to, but I've, I've caught myself getting slightly back into Twitter. Like, not, not 
really because I just don't really follow that many people. But I sometimes when I'm just like taking a shit or something, I'll scroll Twitter, right? And I saw a tweet with like, I don't remember exactly how, but it was in a double like 10k something range of votes or whatever the fuck they have. I don't know. Likes. There was like some. It was retweeted by some person. I don't fucking remember. It was like, you know, I don't think humans were meant to interact with hundreds of strangers on a daily basis. Like, I don't think we're brains are meant to do that. And it's like, this is clearly like a leftist account, right? This is clearly like a progressive type of person saying this sort of shit. Like, you can't, you can't reconcile fucking biological determinism with the rest of your ideology, bro. Like, you can't say, oh, humans weren't meant to do X as any sort of argument if you're a fucking leftist, (laughs) you know? (laughs) You You can't pick and choose when that's a fucking correct argument. Humans weren't meant to do... Oh, oh, so you 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 know, do you? <laughs> you know, you look at the programming code behind humans. You know what else humans weren't meant to fucking do? Farm. <laughs> you know what we weren't meant to fucking do? Like, anything, ever? Bro, no one's meant to do anything. What the fuck? You can't take your fucking evolutionary fucking Evo psych ass... Bullshit and throw it. You, you <laughs> silly people everywhere. They're very silly, these people. They're very silly. You want to hear the level of mental illness I'm on? So I, I like playing Counter-Strike, as you may have gathered. But the way I like to play Counter-Strike is kind of stupid. Like, I like to fuck around. I don't take the game seriously. I like to fuck with people, right? I don't, I don't like, a dickhead about it. Like, I, I don't, like, grief my teammates or anything. But I don't take the game seriously. And a lot of people take the game way too seriously. Um, which often leads to funny circumstances. So today, for example, playing with some people... And uh, two of them, they neither of them had microphones, but they were typing in chat, very furious at me. It's very funny. Uh, the, the one of them said, "You <laughs> stop playing like a nonce." It was very funny. Um, but uh, you know, and I was like fucking with them the whole time. I even got him with a Joe Mama. I said, "Do you know Joe?" And he just straight up fell for it, like nothing. I did like who falls for that in twenty twenty one? Who falls for? Do you know Joe? Like, are you kidding me? What fucking idiot? Right? And he fell for it. And so I'm, like, laughing to myself, like, what a fucking idiot taking the game this seriously in silver. You know, I'm not even, like, throwing super hard. I'm just not really playing, like, 100% serious. I'm going for stupid, like, trick shots and whatever. Right? But then I catch myself, like, after the game's finished, thinking, like, man, what if that guy thinks I'm actually just really bad at the game? (laughs) Or what if that guy thinks I'm actually stupid? Like... Bro, why the fuck do I care? <laughs> Something's deeply, deeply wrong with me. Is this is this being egotistical? What is it? I don't know. Is this ego? Is this mental illness? I don't actually care. Like I like like the if if I I was to divide myself into a pie chart, I would say a solid ninety seven percent of me doesn't care, but and maybe more, maybe ninety nine percent of me is finds it hilarious that this person even exists. But the fact that there's a 1% of me that thinks like, oh no, that person is just going to go through the rest of their life thinking I was just just an idiot, just a complete mong, right? Like there's a part of me that feels like there is a small part, admitted, like I found it funny at the time, I still find it funny. I'm not sitting there fucking deeply regretting or fucking worrying myself to, to sleep about it, you know? But there's a tiny part of me that still thinks like, oh no, this random stranger on internet game think I'm stupid. What the fuck is wrong with me? <laughs> it's a tiny part, don't get me wrong. It's, it's a tiny, it's a 1% part. But the fact that it exists in the first place is just proof that I'm, I'm just complete retard. 
So Don't Smite made a video called The Nihilist and it's really good and you should all go watch it and as is tradition in the Dimper Mob I have to comment on something in the video in my own video so this is me commenting on something in the video in my own video which is probably the most recognisable powerful part of the video is Dotes' monologue about uh, you know being treated like shit by people and how you know they, they sort of assume that she uh, owes them something you know, owes them uh, respect or even anything at all uh, while, you know, through her whole life she's been treated like shit and now she's expected to do things for other people and, you know, well, blah, blah, blah. It, it's more complicated than that. She does a much better job explaining it in the video. You should just watch it. But what I wanted to point out is that the ideology you're describing there is called humanism. And I've always wanted to talk about, to have an excuse to talk about why I'm anti-humanism. And uh, this is as good a chance as any. I'll, I'll make it brief because I kind of need to piss. Um, <clears throat> uh, but like, the, the point about humanism is that it, humanism uh, is like inherently exclusionary ideology. Because in order to be a humanist, you have to create an ideal in your head of what what it means. You 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 kind of create an an ideal human in your head. You 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 have to have a notion of what is human, uh, and obviously, that notion is going to be limited because the human beings are incredibly varied, right? Um, uh, and you know that you could even make an argument. Well, does humanism include things like general AI? Would that be, you know, that's a dumb argument, but you could include stuff like that. Like, you know, it's exclusionary because you, you just, someone has to decide what are the qualities that matter, that count with regards to humanism. Like, perhaps a humanist m might, might uh, you know, regard it as a, as a, as a a good decision to uh, you know lock up a schizophrenic in a mental institution against their will for their whole life away from society uh, you know so they aren't a danger to themselves or others and you know I'm not here to make moral judgments about anything I'm uh, you know I don't believe in morality uh, you know you, I'm not here to make moral judgments but I'm just here to point that out that uh, because humanism is exclusionary and it is exclusionary specifically of people who don't fit the, uh, you know, the ruling classes, which tends to be, you know, neurotypicals. Um, and uh, throughout history, there have been various people classed as subhuman, of course, you know, from uh, black people, Jews, disabled, and, uh, uh, you know, LGBT people. And throughout all of these cases where you'll find this sort of subhuman classification, the mentally ill are always there. Um, and so if you're, if you're neurodivergent, then humanism no longer works for you. It no longer works in your favor because you're no longer classified as uh, as uh, as human, and they will never admit to this because the pro it's a uh, it, you're still to them you're you know to to their optics mode you know you're still classified as human or how do I put this? It's not that you're not human anymore, but it's that your values now no longer line up with. Um, widely accepted reality of values, right? As a as a as a neurodivergent, you're, you know, for example, if you're an autistic person, and you're have you know you're having a conversation with someone, and you're just sort of paying attention to the room around you, you're just sort of looking at a wall because you see something interesting instead of looking in their eyes, you know, that's an inhuman act to them. It's not an inhuman act to you. Because you're still a human, presumably, or something close to it, right? <laughs> you know, you. Th that's the problem with humanism, and so the discrimination you you faced, don't smite, 
is actually due to humanist ideology. And I'm sure you know this and you would say, well, yeah, of course. Um, but I don't know if you would have actually ever actually said it. So there you go. You probably just think it's obvious, as I also think it's obvious, but I need an excuse to say it, and you gave me an excuse, so thank you. The way it tends to go for me is that I don't really feel tired, and then suddenly, you know, just before I fall asleep, I feel suddenly it all hits me, and I'm just like, I, I, basically I struggle to, like, like when you've been awake for too long and your eyelids start drooping without your control. That's that's when I feel tired. I don't feel tired winding up to that until the last minute. And that leads to a problem, which is that I always tend to open a beer, right, at just the wrong time, right? So I just opened this beer, like, a cup, maybe, maybe five minutes ago or whatever. I was sipping. Less than five, two minutes, three minutes. Three minutes ago, let's see. Open this bit three minutes ago. Take a little sip from it, you know, do what I gotta do. Now, when I say beer, just know that I make spicy beer. I have a little recipe I like to call spicy beer. It's a cocktail, very advanced cocktail of called spicy beer. What you do is you get beer and you put vodka in it. Um, because, because beer isn't alcoholic enough on its own, so you put vodka in the beer. That's my spicy beer recipe. So, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the last the level my life is on. Anyway, my problem is, so you open this beer three, five minutes ago, whatever, you sip it, you, you drink it three minutes ago, and after you have a little bit, you do it, you realize, oh, I'm actually suddenly really tired. I'm, I'm now faced with a problem. I, I probably won't finish this beer, before I go to sleep. So, I have two options now. Either I finish the, either the... Okay, first option is I leave it half finished. You know, I drink what I drink and I probably end up drinking half of it or whatever and half the beer is just sitting out there as I go to sleep wasted, right? Not doing anything. Or I just finish the whole beer, right? But then who's getting drunk? Not me. I'll be asleep at the time. It's been a whole other day, and I don't even believe it happened. I literally believe I was scammed. I actually believe I was scammed, because there's no... There's no way enough time passed for a whole day to pass. There's no... But, like, I don't remember anything happening. But I remember yesterday, like, it was... You know what I'm saying? None of this is real. None of this is real. Something about vegans and vegetarians that I don't understand. And this isn't like a moral thing. This is like a pragmatic thing. This is like a question I genuinely have. See, when I eat lots of vegetables, when I eat healthy, like I eat vegetarian meals with lots of greens, I, I'm farting. I'm farting like crazy for like the next day. I'm farting so much. I can't stop. It's kind of gross. I'm sorry for bringing it up. But how are vegans not constantly just, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's because I'm not used to it. Maybe if I only ate vegetables and my farting would not be so extreme. But it's just, it makes me unpleasant to be around because I'm just constantly farting. How do vegans do it? How do vegetarians not just fart constantly? Maybe it's, I don't know, maybe it's just me. But... I mean, it's the, you know, I actually quite like vegetables. I know it's, it shouldn't be a thing, even a, a thing you have to say, but I quite like vegetables. I like they could, they they're good. I like greens. I like broccoli and shit. Like, if you don't like if you don't like broccoli, make it, put some butter on it. So boil the broccoli, right? Get a little bit of butter. So to, when it, when it's out, but it's still really hot, melt a little bit of butter over it. Just like put it on top and a bit of salt and like stir it up so the butter coats the broccoli and the salt coats the broccoli that's one of the most delicious things a human being could possibly eat and that's fine like a, a few bits of broccoli is fine but when I'm eating a meal that's just vegetables I'm fighting for days let me let me tell a little story let me give a little example about um morality right uh tell a little story so okay here's here's the setup I am like a higher up, not like not like top dog, but like a higher up, in in some sort of gang, right? Like some like a Crips, Bloods, whatever you want, right? I'm like a higher up in a gang, right? And and one of my guys, okay, so someone from another gang comes and tries to kill one of my guys. He doesn't succeed. He's stopped, but he tries to kill one of my guys, 
right? And so, I send out a couple of my goons, pick him up, and I kidnap him. I lock him in my basement for 25 years. Clearly, the guy who tried to kill someone, in the wrong. Clearly me, also in the wrong. But people do 25 to life for attempted murder of a police officer. Just a different gang. It's just a rename, all I had to do was rename the gang suddenly. Oh, that's just punitive justice. That's a completely responsible way to run society. Hmm. Interesting. Just hoping, in case people... Oh God, this is not how you start a clip. Let's, let's, let's try speaking English. So I made a song called Wrong Planet, right? It, it's kind of a new direction for No Thank You, that I, um, the music stuff that I'm kind of hoping to go in. More of a post-punky kind of modernizing post-punk in a sense because I'm slightly you know punk seems it feels kind of contrived to me to keep making punk um, as time goes on and I think I think uh, the obvious step is post-punk but I think don't think people know that I've been making post-punk for as long as I've been making music some of the first music I made that actually sounded decent was post-punk it's, it's not on the internet anywhere but it was post-punk inspired at least so, you know I'm a big fan of uh, Joy Division is one of my biggest influences. I, I know a lot of Joy Division sort of fans, I guess, or dedicated fans, say, uh, and Joy Division themselves, say Closer is, like, truer to their artistic vision than Unknown Pleasures. But And I know Unknown Pleasures is a very cliched album to like, like, it's kind of the meme album. But in my opinion, on, for years, I would say to anyone I, that would listen that all drums in every record should sound like the drums in Unknown Pleasures. Uh, of course, my drums don't sound anything like that, and my opinion on that has changed. Uh, but I still love the drum mixing in that album and everything about that album. I think Unknown Pleasures is an incredible... Anyway, that's a digression. Uh, I don't know if people know this, but I made this album... Um, but Hello? This Forgotten Void. Um on my X49 Sounds. I don't know if people even know about this. So I have a second band camp called x 49 soundsbandcampcom where I post all the other stuff that doesn't end up on No Thank You. It's actually older than No Thank You. These first three albums are actually created before No Thank You was a thing when I was making techno. If you like techno, um, like like minimal techno, I'm still very happy with this, with Ariel. I think this is a genuinely great minimal techno four track EP so if you like that sort of thing but I made this this little short um, sort of 70s goth post punk album uh, in a day and I honestly uh, it's quite different from um, Wrong Planet it's it's much more energetic uh, upbeat aggressive you know goth rather than the sort of like chilled out relaxing post-punk but if you like that sort of style and you want to hear more by me in that style then I would definitely recommend this album because I, I think this is I'm still like I still listen back to this album like, like once in a while and and I, I'm still quite like I'm very proud of how it turned out like I think it's actually some genuinely good like goth <laughs> you know old school goth um so yeah, check check out this Forgotten Void because uh, and I look forward to more sort of post punk stuff in the future when I, because I, I I, I want to try and make post punk that doesn't sound like it happened in the seventies and eighties. Like that's the fucking challenge, is taking this genre, which has all the cliches of seventies and eighties music, like late seventies and eighties music, um, and trying to keep it. So it's still very much true to the genre, but it doesn't feel like a a nostalgic trip to the past. This album does. This album sounds like... I, I tried my best to make it sound like the 70s, like late 70s. Uh, but, um, you know, I, I'm trying to work on right now bringing post-punk into a, a place where it doesn't... It's still recognizably post-punk and true to the genre, but doesn't sound old-fashioned. Like, it sounds... You know... it, it does, It's not about nostalgia. I, I hate nostalgia culture. The more it happens, the more I hate it. 
and so I, I, I don't want to participate in it. Uh, I mean, sometimes I do, but I don't want to participate in it um, right now. <laughs> It's okay to be nostalgic for things. That's not the problem. But, uh, you know, I don't want to brand No Thank You as a nostalgia artist. But, uh, you know, I so I want to try and... Uh, you get the point I'm trying to make. But the, the, point, the point I'm trying to make is listen to this album and listen to all the stuff on X49s if you like my music. Because a lot of really good... There's... Here. God, you're pathetic. Some of my f- friends and stuff think this is my best album. Like, people, people think this is my best album. How to Feed No Ravens, that's also a pretty decent album. Um, Kill Myself Immediately, I think this is one of my best albums. Um, Killing Cops and 0.5 A-Presses by Insurrectionary Scuttlebug Jamboree. Like, come on. This album has the best fucking names of any album ever made. Look, Aulus is Fascist, Throw Cops in the Fire Sea. They put me in GBJ for criticizing the Mushroom Kingdom's imperialistly, imperialist regime. Yoshi Tax Strike is practi- Praxis, Curb Stomping Goombas for the Glory of Satan, Mips Clip into the Federal Reserve. Come on, you 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 never heard of Mario 64 speedrunning themed, um, like fucking Cyber Grind, Blackened Cyber Grind album? Before, if you never heard of a <laughs> Mario 64 speedrunning Black and Cybergrind album before, does that sound interesting to you? X49 Sounds. Why do I even own this piece of shit? It cost two grand, it took a year to pay off, right? It's fucking broken, the screen breaks when it overheats, like this, the, there's a something called a T-Con board, which is located around here, I've done my research, somewhere in here, on the, like, inside, right, and when the laptop gets too hot, the T-Con board overheats and the screen starts breaking, right, uh, uh, it's fucked, right, it's a bad thing, it's a, it's a, and it's a Mac, it's proprietary OS, it's, it's, you know, it's got, it's got many problems, so why the fuck do I even own this piece of shit, right? When I have a perfectly usable computer right here. And another one. <laughs> um, but, uh, well, music is the simple answer. Uh, I, I've tried. There There are a few Linux-based DAWs, right? There's uh, Ardor, LMMS. Uh, both of those, they're usable, but, n- like, not to a professional level that, that I need it to be usable. Like... LMMS can barely handle audio, like, and Ardor is just not that good, to be honest. Like, it's, it's, it's usable, like, you can make it work, but you can't make it work well. (laughs) Uh, so, that's why I don't use, and Linux audio is just fucked, like, Pulse Audio and Alsa, they just don't work. I think it's called Elsa. Am I thinking something else? I don't know. They just are shit. Like, they're just really fucking bad. Uh, and no one can be bothered to make better ones. And I don't have the technical knowledge to make better ones. It's probably really hard to fix Linux audio. But as far as I've read, no one likes the way audio works on Linux, but no one knows how to do it better. Um, I, prob- I, I haven't tried. Maybe it's possible to get Ableton or FL to run in Wine on Linux. Maybe that's possible. I, I haven't tried it. I don't know FL. I've never used it. And I've used Ableton barely. Uh, I could probably learn Ableton. I, I could take the time to learn it. I don't know if it would run in, would run in Wine. I could probably look it up. Um, I don't know if it does run in Wine. But even if it does, uh, this computer is uh, 11 years old now, I think. The X220. Um... And quite slow, uh, e- even with my upgrades that I have to it. I have upgraded RAM and upgraded storage. Um, you know, it's it's quite slow. It's it's not up to modern standards. Uh, I can't really play video games on it or anything. But you actually surprisingly need quite a lot of processing power to uh, do do things like live loopback while while you're recording. So as in, so you can hear yourself in your headphones while you're recording, which is very very useful, especially for playing bass, for example, because bass might sound completely different when it's going through a bunch of plugins and it does just electric bass with nothing you know it's it's very different tone it's and it just can't there's no way this computer will be able to handle it because this computer can only barely handle it when it's only got logic open you have like if i really want to record stuff live with no latency i need to close everything uh except logic and there's no way this computer is going to be able to handle that so 
sadly, I have to have a Mac because that's the only way I can make music to a good standard. And also, you know, even if I took the time to go and learn Ableton, not that I would be able to, you know, saying like, oh, you could get a PC instead. Even if I took the time to learn Ableton or whatever, like I've been using Logic for seven years now, I think six or seven years. Uh, and I'm just very good at Logic. I mean, I'm not the world's best producer or anything. I'm not trying to say that, but I am very fast. I have a workflow that works really well for me. Um, I, I, I can get work done quickly and efficiently. I know all the plugins that I need to use inside and out. Uh, I'm just very comfortable using Logic. And that's very that's actually very important when you're making music because you want as little barrier between what's in your head and what you're making as possible. You, like, especially the way I work I, I need to work quickly to get the ideas down fast and then you know take like that's just how I, I operate I, I, otherwise it's frustrating and it doesn't feel like I'm making art it feels like I'm wrestling with a program uh, and so that's why I have a Mac uh, you know it's not for video games I know I play Counter-Strike on this computer but I, I've gone years without playing Counter-Strike um, like it, it's not that it, it doesn't ruin my life if I can't play Counter Strike, uh, and you know I can play one point six on this computer. It, it runs, so I could probably still get away with some sort of CS if I if, if I'm feeling. Um, yeah, it's just music, and it sucks that I have to have a Mac and I have to support Apple uh, and give them all my telemetry data or whatever uh, while I'm using that computer. But what can you do? That I haven't found a solution. Like, I, I, I can't think of a solution that doesn't cost a bunch of money. Like, the only solution I could think of is if I did go through the time to learn Ableton properly, because, I, I mean, I know the basics, but I would have to obviously learn it to a more advanced level and then build myself a proper rig, uh, PC rig, maybe dual booting. But you can, you just can't make music on Linux. It just doesn't work, which it sucks. You can do basics. Like, there are some good Linux applications that will let you do stuff like amp simulation for guitar or, you know, guitar-based. There's a lot of, like, audio-based. There's there's some, like, synths, software synths for Linux that are uh, quite good, like, uh, as far as I've heard. I think you... I'm... I don't know. I haven't tried it. Maybe I could do some, like, live coding music. Never tried it. Really wanted... Always wanted to get into live coding music. Um, but never taken the time to do it. That that might be possible on Linux. I haven't tried it. I should probably look into that actually. Um, but as far as my main mainline music stuff goes, I I'm, I I apologize to everyone. <laughs> I apologize to myself. But sadly, I I just have to own a Mac. It, it it sucks, but I just have to. Like I don't have a choice. It's my fucking job. I think it's time I just accept that I have a weird fucking obsession with Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency, the TV show made by Max Landis, not the not the English version, although that one's good too. Um, I think I just have to accept that despite it being not a very good TV show, I just have a strange obsession with it. Um, and I think it's for reasons like this. So in season two, no one in this fucking... No one who watches this channel has seen this TV show. I'm just going to accept this, so I don't care. Um, in season two, uh, there's a mystery, blah, blah, blah. There's a boat that falls from the sky called the Infant Male Pollock Francis, which has a boy in the boat who has some sort of superpowers who can, like, when he dreams about things, the dreams he dreams about manifest in real life. That's the whole mystery of the entire fucking show. Uh, season two, but it's kind of obvious. Um, the question is, who is the boy, I guess, rather than what is his power? You kind of figure that out pretty early on. Anyway, and everything's explained, but I was like, where did the boat come from? I didn't understand where the boat came from that he came on. It's called the infant male Pollock Francis, and I was like, obviously that's a hint. So clearly, that's like the boy's real name before he was adopted by his new parents who sort of found him on the boat. Clearly that's his real name, but where did he come from? Like, I I thought, oh, this must be some, like, Max Landis setting up for, like, a wider universe in future seasons that, like, maybe there's some sort of entity that sort of dropped him out the sky. Like, maybe, maybe some sort of larger organization that creates these, like, super-powered children or people, and that's the one that... No, it turns out I'm an idiot, and 
uh, I it actually makes way more sense of the actual reason, but it's kind of disappointing because I thought it was like a, a wider universe thing, but it's actually self-contained, which I guess is smart and good <laughs> because there was no season three. Um, but uh, kind of annoying because I, I thought it might be something really cool, but it is still something really cool. Now, the great thing about... Uh, Duck Gently is that it's written by Max Landis and there he is <laughs> on a live stream. So I just asked him in a live stream. That, that's not possible in other TV shows, right? I just asked him what was the deal with it and he he just explained it. It's And it's so obvious. The kid can create things that he dreams of. So when he was in the hospital after being born, he was asleep and he dreamed that his crib he didn't explain, go into this much detail, but he just, it makes sense to me. Like, clearly, that's his name that was written on the side of his crib, and he was asleep dreaming that his crib was a boat. And that's how he ended, or maybe he wasn't in the hospital, maybe he was... Well, actually, this doesn't make sense, because how would a baby that young know what a boat is? I fucking, I got you, Max Landis. See, it doesn't make sense. How would a baby know what a boat is? The idea is, obviously, that he was in his crib... In, like with his name written on the side, infant male Pollock Francis, uh, and he was dreaming about that his crib was a boat, and so it just became real and fell from the sky or whatever, right? But how the fuck does an infant know what a boat is? That's not possible, right? Because it's not like a cartoon boat. Like you could you could say maybe, but no, if it's that young, the, like assumedly. He, why would you have your name written on the side of your crib? Because you're in hospital and you've just been born, right? There's not... You're not going to have a medical name like infant male on the side of your crib at home when you're like a one-year-old and you might have seen boats on TV or in real life or whatever and have a vague idea of what they are. Like, you you have to be very, very, very young to, to know what a boat is, right? Like, he wouldn't... He It's not about him being super smart or anything. He physically couldn't have known. He wouldn't have had any... Exp- There's no way, while you're still in hospital from being born, that you could have any experience knowing what a boat is. See? It's, like, smart, but it's dumb. It's... I'm picking stupid fucking nitpicky holes, and, like, that's a stupid fucking plot hole that I shouldn't even care about. But... Uh... Oh, this video gonna end up being three hours long. I wasn't anticipating in video being three hours long. But, uh... I don't know, it's probably pretty long. I'm pretty sure it's over, like, an hour and a half. I don't know. So it's definitely... A, yeah, it doesn't matter. What was my point? Oh, yeah, I have some shit to say about my crisis of artistic identity. You know, the thing that I do every two weeks where I start freaking out about um, everything I make being bad. Not... Or derivative, or caught up in the zeitgeist, or hauntological, or whatever buzzword I I happen to be obsessed with that week. Um, (laughs) It's fun being me. You know, it's great fun. Yeah, I want to go on a rant about how I don't want to make hype pop anymore and whatever. Did I already go on this rant? I already went on that rant in this video. But I got more rant to make. Because I, I, I want to start theorizing about, like, what sort of music I want to start making. And I have ideas, but I'm too tired to talk about them right now. I'm about to sleep. Why did I even record this? The video for Are You Autistic... The idea behind the second half of that video was to flex shit that no one else would flex. Like, so I flex uh, my ability to juggle caffeine pills, DXM pills, uh, the CCRU collected writings book, (laughs) and my incredibly large folder of like a thousand, more than a thousand, I forgot how many images of the character Akari from the anime Yuri Yuri. Um, that folder's now gone. As you know, if you're watching this video this far, that my computer broke and I had to replace the hard drive. And uh, I didn't back up that entire folder. So most of those, that folder is lost to time. And 
I don't see it as a bad thing, really. I, I, if anything, it's a positive reminder of the transience of all things. You know, I, I don't really mind stuff like that. Because everything is transient, really. And I don't... I don't do things like that to keep them forever. I just do them to have had them at some point. I think that's what's important. At the time when I made, um, To the Fairest, I was very interested in the idea, and, to be honest, um, the one before that <laughs> doesn't laugh. Mm. Uh, I was, I was very interested in, like, Boogie Pop idea, right? And I was very interested in taking ideas of pop music and sort of, like, expanding them until they became, uh, unrecognizable because the stuff like I was very interested in the philosophy that like the stuff that we see as like a mainstream and poppy it's it's basically just arbitrary like sparkly vocals and whatever seen as poppy like that's just because of the cultural thing if you remove it from its context it can actually sound weird as fuck um you know that that's basically the idea that I was going for um but now everyone's doing that. <laughs> clearly that was the... Not that I really knew it at the time. But clearly that's where the world was headed in terms of music. Um, you know, with the modern hyperpop stuff and... Whatever else. Modern electronic music in general. Uh, but clearly that's that's what everyone's doing now. <laughs> and it's like, okay. I, I, I get it. <laughs> yeah, okay. I understand now. You're not going to show me anything new in that, you know? And so, in fact, they've just gone full circle. And they're, they're no longer even making any point about pop music. They're just recreating it in their own image. Which I guess is interesting to them. But it's no longer interesting to me. Uh, so now I need... I, you know, I, we, it's very American. <laughs> it's a very American way to think about things. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm not American. I, I, London has always been, and the UK, has always come with some answer. Whenever, whenever there's been a bunch of pop, poppy, shit, whenever, whenever some culture gets popular, the UK comes along with a way more depressing answer and an industrial, cold, um, brutalist answer to that movement, and that just hasn't happened yet with whatever this modern thing is. In fact. Like Sophie and PC Music are uh, British. Kai Winston, I think that's his name. British Igloo Ghost is from London. Uh, like a lot of these people are English, but they're not. They're doing. They're not really doing that. They are a bit. I. Uh, uh, but yeah, a lot of it's very LA. A lot of this music's very LA, and I do not like LA. I I want to see like. Like, I, I really want to combine, like, a bunch of these interesting influences of, like, the cool, like, deeper counterculture, the more mm, cold counterculture, industrial countercultures in the UK, like, uh, uh, like, post-punk and, like, grime, you know, and, like, industri old-school industrial and uh, all the stuff that was born in the UK... Uh, I I want to like combine it all and modernize it all and make it make a new thing. Not out of any sort of UK pride, but just because that's a reflection of my actual environment. Like it, it it's not a false image. It's that's what I see when I go outside. Not that I go outside that much, but yeah. Um, I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's kind of my musical goals. Something that I've often thought when making music is that I kind I kind of hate writing lyrics. Um, I always kind of think, well, if I could say it in words, I would have just told you. The whole point of music is that I can't say it with words. I have to say it with, you know, art, emotion, stuff that can't be put into words. So 
feels it's always felt like I'm kind of cheapening it when I put words in. That's why Encycle Futility is like has barely any fucking singing in it. Um, it's all about the music, not about the language. Because language, the, my philosophy on art, I don't know if this is what other people think, but it's it's a method of communication that fills in the gaps of language. Because language isn't that effective at doing certain things, and that's where art comes in, you know? Some, some art is very language-based, like poetry or cinema, for example, uh, books, of course. Uh, but music is doesn't have to be, and I think that's kind of its power, in a way. It can be. Uh, I don't know if I'm making any sense, but, yeah. But the, I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm having a crisis of consciousness with my, my music. I need to reinvent myself. I need to reinvent myself. I, I don't want to be misinterpreted as thinking that music with lyrics is bad. That's very much not true. A lot of my favourite music has lyrics, and a lot of the good parts of that music comes from the lyrics. The obvious example being Pat the Bunny. His lyricism is basically the whole point of the music. Um, and, you know, I'm not as good of a writer as he is. I can't write lyrics as, as good as he does. Um, and, you know, so many of my favourite albums have vocals. I love hip-hop, for example. I love grime. Uh, I love... I don't need to explain to you that I like music with vocals in it. I love music with vocals in it. Um, I just don't know if I... Nece- I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know. I, I, I like... Sometimes I like writing lyrics. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I like singing. Sometimes I like screaming. Um, I love DSPM. Like, that has vocals in it, but they're more of an instrument than a melodic... Uh, or than a, than a word-based thing, linguistic thing, which is, I mean, I love that, so maybe I should make more of that, I don't know. Um, I was thinking back of, like, you know what, I'll do this in a... Actually, no, I'll, I'll just continue this clip. There's no reason for me to do another clip. Um, I was thinking back to, like, what are the most powerful musical experiences I've had? You know, I think I've only been, as far as I can think, to one electronic music show, like, proper, like... I've, I've seen Death Grips, which I guess is electronic, but there's a guy shouting over it and a guy playing drums. I've seen Atari Teenage Riot, again, there's a guy shouting over it. Um, I think that's all I can think of, except for the one time when I went by myself uh, to go see Venetian Snares and Daniel Lenoir. Is that how you pronounce it? I don't know. Leno- Le- it's spelled like Lenoise, but I think it's pronounced Lenoir. I don't know. Um, uh, when they, they did a gig in London to prom- when they, the day the album came out great fucking breakcore cool album by the way um, it's like Daniel L- I'm just going to call him Lane Noir. I might be completely mispronouncing that he plays like ambient guitar and it like it's like a, the crazy like a Venetian snares breakcore cool featuring ambient guitar it's an insane combination but it just works and it works so well so I saw them at that show I, I went there and it was um, when I was there, b- bear in mind, 99% of the shows I've been to are small punk gigs. I used to go to loads of small punk gigs. And, you know, the rest of them are heavy music. I'm used to wild, rowdy, everyone dancing, jumping up and down, moshing crowds, right? Pretty much every gig I've ever been to has been like that. Um, no one was dancing. <laughs> everyone was just standing there. And I was like, what the fuck is this? I was dancing. I was trying to dance, right? And everyone was just standing there. And I'm scanning the crowd, and I'm like, what the fuck's going on? This is fucking... I came here to listen to fucking drums, drum and bass, and fucking dance, you know? It, just because it's intelligent music, just because it brain you, don't mean you can't move your body to it. Come on, why is everyone just standing around? I mean, I'm sure they're just appreciating the music. Like, I'm not... No one was filming it or anything, which is pretty dope. Um, but, uh, yeah, everyone was... I wasn't used to that experience where everyone's just, like, standing there appreciating the music and not dancing at all. Um, and But I, went, but I caught out of the corner of my eye uh, a couple people uh, dancing. Um, and I basically, <laughs> over the course of the show, slowly danced my way over to them. <laughs> it was very funny. Um, and the closer I got, I was like, oh, okay, these guys are oh, on MDMA. Sick. These are my type of people. So I sort of slowly danced my way over to them, and then, like, by halfway through the show, because I think it's like an hour long, um, or it felt like an hour, it felt like it forever, it felt like an eternity in the, in the best possible way. Um, and, you know, towards the end, I, like, slowly, you know, started dancing with them, 
but none of us are good dancers. We're just having fun, moving our body, jumping up and down and shit. A couple other people joined in, but really it was just me and these two guys who were on MDMA. Um, I was sober, by the way, completely stunned sober. Um, but man, I think that was like a transcendental experience. I got high from the music. Like, I know it's a cliche, but when I, like, so the set ended as, uh, with a long noise piece. Like, they, they, it was a song that, like, devolved into a noise, and then the noise, would, like, I thought it would be like, oh, it's the climax, it's, it's just a noise thing to end the song. But the noise kept going, and it kept, like, I love noise music, as you know, so it was fucking so cool, especially after you've been dancing all night, and then the noise just washes over you, and I just sort of stood back and just closed my eyes, and just let it, and it was a, such a powerful experience, it was so cool. Um... And then, uh, you know, I, I, I barely talked, I didn't even talk to the guys afterward. I think I was wearing uh, my Bad Brains t-shirt and the guy said, oh, you like Bad Brains? Yeah, I, I, I got the same t-shirt. And I was like, oh, cool. And then we just sort of parted ways. Um, and walking out of the venue, it was literally like I was high. Like, I was like, flo- like the floating feeling of like being high, like everything seemed like... I could have sworn I was seeing traces. <laughs> like, it was crazy. It's like a, it's literally like being high. I didn't take anything. I didn't even have any alcohol or anything. I was just the pure power of just the music. Um, man, what a great gig! I would love to see Venetian Snares again. Um, I haven't really been to that many gigs after that, really, because I sort of don't like going outside and being in crowds. Cause most of the most gigs are kind of shit. That's a that's a little fact for you. Most shows, they're just not that fun. Um, uh, yeah, uh, unless you find the right crowd and you just never know who's gonna be there. Uh, and especially because I'm quite unfit, so dancing for a long time is quite hard. <laughs> and uh, I also get nervous in crowded spaces, which is not very good for gigs. And two of the worst panic attacks I've ever had have been at shows. Um, so I don't have the best experience, which is why it's so cool. Even though I keep, I kept going to them for years. <laughs> I still, I would still like to once COVID's over. I'd still like to maybe, I don't know who I'd see. I, I, I think, I, I have a prediction that Shinsei Kamatachan's going to do a world tour. Because they're, they're like famous around the world now because of Dudu and because of, um... Uh, the OP for Shingeki no Kyojin. Um, so I, I have a theory that they, uh, they're going to at least tour the US, but I really hope they come. It's kind of a mixed bag, because uh, on the one hand, I really hope they come to the UK and play, but on the other hand, I know they're not going to play any of their older good shit. Like, they're going to play stuff from their new albums, which I'm not so into. I mean, they'll pff- hopefully they play Rock and Roll Keeps Ringing In My Ears, because I think they play that in every show, and that's a fucking banger. But then there's no way they're going to play any of my favorite Shinsei Kamatsu-chan songs. So they're not going to play OSO Chujin at, at some random fucking show in London. They're going to play the hits, right? You might play that to your home crowd because it's like a deep cut. Uh, but you're not going to, you know? And I, that's kind of sad to me. Like, I feel like, what's the point in going if it's just going to make me disappointed with my favorite band? Um, I, I mean, I still would probably go because it's, it's like an opportunity you can't miss. But it just makes me... You know. Shinsei Kamatachan. There's a band that has lyrics that I don't understand. I don't really care about understanding. I mean, I do sometimes, but... It's not about the words you say. And I, I don't know. It's why I don't write lyrics down for most of my songs. And everyone's like, in the comments, anyone got lyrics? The lyrics don't matter, or I would have made it so you could hear them. <laughs> like you can, that's not, that's a choice I make when I mix my music. I'm I'm there, behind the controls of my computer, and I'm I can mix it so that the the lyrics are very easy, intelligible. Right, that's a that's a skill you can do. That is a a thing you can choose to do, and I choose not to do it because the the, the voice is there for a texture, not for the literal words that are being said. That's the it's not interesting to me. <sighs> yeah, I just made a really banging fucking old school dubstep song, and it bangs. And I'm really happy with myself. I'm really proud of myself. And now, now I want to make dubstep forever. 
Um, but I don't want to just make dubstep. I want to like, you know, I'm, I'm going to spend like at least a month just not listening to anything with a trap beat because I'm so fucking bored of it. I've realized how fucking contrived it is after, after yesterday seeing that, like, I've been thinking this for a while, but yesterday I saw that video, um, uh, uh, all my friends hate Skrillex or something, or, uh, how, what, like, how, what happened to Dubstep, basically. It's a really good video, I definitely recommend it. All my homies hate Skrillex, I think that's what it's called. Definitely check that video out. Um, but, but yeah, I saw that, and that was like the, like, okay, all these feelings I've been thinking about music, um, like, I can't, I can no longer ignore them. I can't keep on making hyper pop. <laughs> like, it's, it's got, something's got to change, something's got to give. And, uh, I think it's given. One of the reasons that I keep making fucking hyper pop is that this piece of shit fucking broke. Fell off my desk and broke. And you need a drill to open it up. I, I tried opening it up myself, but you can't. Like, it, it's just physically impossible. It's too tight. The screws are too tight. And I don't have a machine. So I bought a new one. I ordered the new one on Amazon. Um, and I was like, wow, it's a steal. I, it was a slightly different model, but the one I bought is normally over a hundred quid, but I found one for 80 quid and I was like, wow, of course it never fucking arrived. <laughs> um, you know, it was, it was supposed to take a month to ship, but like just under a month. And I was like, well, I guess if I'm only paying 80 quid for it, that's fine. Um, but yeah, it never fucking arrived. I got a refund, which is fine. But, um, I'm fucking pissed and I'm sort of dejected. I, I need to buy a new one. If you don't know what this is, by the way, I should have explained. This is an audio interface, so I can plug my bass guitar into my computer. Um, should have explained that. But yeah, I do need to buy another one, but I really don't fucking have the money to spare. I need to pay rent and shit. Patreon.com forward slash no thank you. The O's are zeros. Um, I'm also kind of behind on Patreon stuff a little bit. I, I, I can just keep making music. I like making music. It's fun. Um, yeah. I, th there's this, like, I don't know. I feel like I'm right on the edge. I feel like I know, I feel like now I know, I know what I need to be exploring. I just need to take time. Like, I just need to spend a bunch of time just exploring all these avenues of music, just listening to a bunch of music and making a bunch of music and just experimenting and seeing what sticks. I know this is some pretentious shit and you guys probably don't care, but this is the stuff I think about, you know, I think about, it's, it's my job. <laughs> uh, it's my, uh, like I, 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 th I feel like I think about this shit too much, but I can't not do it. Like other people, it seems like other musicians don't choose what they make. <laughs> They just make whatever comes naturally to them. But nothing comes naturally to me in the world. Um, everything I make, I I can't make it without thinking about the bigger, I guess, bigger picture. Uh, like, I can't, I can't make a song without drawing connections to other stuff, you know, like genre or whatever. Like... Like if I if I make a guitar riff, for example, then I'm thinking like, oh, that guitar riff sounds uh, metally or post punky or punky or indie or whatever emo math rock. I like I'm thinking about what style that is, and I'm like, it's like, okay, so now I have now I've made a, a Midwest emo type riff. So now I have all the baggage that comes with making Midwest emo. I can't ignore it. And so all of my preconceived notions of Midwest emo, it's not even necessarily preconceived notions, but all of the, the things I associate, the culture, the, 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 um, the, the symbols, the, the signifiers that I associate with the Midwest emo come rushing into my head, you know? And it's like, it feels like, can I just uncritically make this music? Or do I have to make something that comments on itself? That's all my albums... Um, are commentaries on themselves, obviously, which is stupid. <laughs> I wish I could not do that. Like Ethernet, you know, doesn't doesn't do this. Ethernet just makes dope music because that's what's in their head. <laughs> um, I I can't do that. I, I like. Yeah. I don't know how long this video is, but 
Uh, should I just end it here? Thank you for listening to my giblets or whatever. I think this is a good emotional conclusion for the video. Yeah, you know what? I wasn't planning this to be the end, but I think this is the end. Uh, let's get let's get editing.